guys, we know about Velocicoaster. The latest and greatest creation from Intamin has finally been announced and some of our questions have now been answered as Universal has recently announced Jurassic World Velocicoaster. Before we even dive into this coaster, can we just talk about this name for a little bit? One thing that disappointed me about this name is that Universal finally had potential to keep a roller coaster's name short. I mean, we have Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, Woody Woodpecker Nuthouse Coaster, The Incredible Hulk Coaster, Flight of the Hippogriff, and now we have Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Now what do we got? Jurassic World Velocicoaster. If they took out Jurassic World, the name would have been perfect. I will say though, the name Velocicoaster is pretty cool, but Universal seems to be enjoying these play on words. I mean, the new Incredible Hulk Coaster clone that is going to Universal Studios Beijing next year is rumored to have the name Decepticoaster, and the new Jason Bourne show having the name The Bourne Stuntacular. Universal must be having a ton of fun with their names. Now that we know about the name, we actually have some stats that have been given for this coaster. It is going to be 4,700 feet long, so fun fact, this is the longest Intamin Blitz coaster in the world, so that's going to be really cool. Its height is 155 feet, which makes it the second tallest coaster at Universal, only under Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, and it has a max speed of 70 miles per hour, which means it has the fastest launch in the state of Florida. Overall, Velocicoast will be a record breaker for the state, and it will be an icon as its unique layout will bring something different to the area. So now let's look at the announcement and see what we can look forward to with Universal's latest project. So the first thing we see is a shot of the train, and this train looks really good. I always knew that this train was going to have some kind of blue and black design since those are the two main colors for the Jurassic World franchise, and I think Universal executed this design perfectly. I mean, the front of the car looks as if you combined a Dodge Challenger and a Lamborghini together, so that's awesome. You can also see that the front car is going to have some lights. Obviously, we have this huge LED panel right in the front, and we have these small little headlights on top, which I think is great because the other four main outdoor coasters at Universal all have a light package on the train for its nighttime hours. We saw with the new Hulk trains, we see it with Hagrid's motorbike front light, we see it with Rip Ride Rocket's sides, so Velocicoaster is going to look amazing at night, and we can even see that in the shot of concept art. I mean, just look at this. This looks astonishing, and... I could just imagine walking into Islands of Adventure at 7pm and just seeing this light package on the train soaring through the ride. And especially with the black track, it's going to just look like a velociraptor soaring through the night. It's going to be incredible. The seats also look really good, and I really enjoy these little headlights on the top corners of each seat. That's going to look really cool when the ride actually opens. In the next shot, we get a sneak peek of the first show scene right before the first launch. And real quick, for those who don't know the theme for the ride yet, you basically are a velociraptor escaping your cage to run and speed through Jurassic World. So the first show scene will be you and other velociraptors waiting for the gates to open so you can run through Jurassic World as free as you can be. That's why during the first launch, you will be going through different cages before the layout even begins. This first show scene will probably have screens and no animatronics. I, I think that's best because of what this second show scene is rumored to have, it's going to look really cool, so it's better to save the best for last since everyone's just going to be excited for the layout to actually begin on this coaster. So even though the first show scene will probably only be screens, it's still going to be a great scene that will really get you pumped up for the ride. After that shot, we then get another angle of the train, this time from the bottom, and then after that we get to see the new restraints for this coaster. So these are actually the new Intamin lap bars that do come down over your shoulder. These restraints can be found on the newer Intamin coasters like Terran, Taiga, Pantheon, and some more. I was able to try out these new restraints at IAPA Expo 2019, and trust me when I say this is one of, if not the best coaster restraint out there. It's very open and small, so you can feel safe and feel free the entire ride. One thing I will say is this reminds me a lot of a B&M clamshell, but as if it went over your shoulder. I know that sounds weird, 
but when you really think about that in perspective it has that nice soft padding but still gives you all that room to really feel what the ride has to offer so you can expect some great airtime on this coaster after that the train is going to launch into the first element where we can get a great shot of the entire train and one thing that surprised me is that this coaster will have six car trains which means 12 rows and a max of 24 riders per car this is going to be great because the back row and even the front row are really going to hurl you through these elements and after this we get a ton of different shots of the layout and then it ends by showing the name and logo for jurassic world velocicoaster and real quickly going back to these trains we can really see that these long trains especially with these smaller restraints where there's no need for seat belts or anything else like that operations for this coaster are going to be fast it obviously won't have these quick loading stations like rip ride rocket and Hagrid's have but it will have a quick operation status just like Hulk and Hulk has these over shoulder restraints with seat belts and those ops fly just think how fast Velocicoasters are going to be when it keeps sending trains hopefully every 40 seconds so if you have already seen my video why Velocicoaster is going to be the world's best roller coaster then you guys are already familiar with the layout so I'm going to quickly go through the elements to explain the layout a little bit more and quickly sum up this whole coaster so the train is going to roll out of the station and head into the first show scene. After this, the train is going to hit the first launch, which we do not have a confirmed top speed for. But if I had to guess, I would say somewhere between 45 to 55 miles per hour. After that, the train is going to head into its first out of four inversions and head up into a dive loop. After this, the coaster will hit a snappy bank turn to the right and then go into a small airtime hill, which will twist you down to the left and then go up into a giant rock. After this, the coaster will hit a downwards S-bend and then transition into a small overbank turn to the left. Following this, the coaster will quickly twist to the right and head into a small outer banked airtime hill. And after that, the coaster will twist down to the right and head into the second launch, completing the first half. As I said before in my last video, the first half is going to be great. It will have most of the theming aspects that this ride is going to offer, such as Velociraptor statues and lots and lots of rock work. But I do believe that the second half is really going to be where the coaster shines, while the first half is really going to be where the theming shines. However, both of them are going to have such good layouts that will really pack in a lot of different elements that you won't see in either half. So it's going to be really cool that the first half is going to be the complete opposite of the second half. So the second launch will hit a max speed of 70 miles per hour, which will be the fastest moment on the coaster. And it will accelerate to that speed in 2.4 seconds. That means that the second launch is going to be extremely powerful and you can expect a great kick as you go into that second launch. After that, the coaster will twist up into the 155 foot top hat, which will be the highest point of the coaster and then dive down an 80 degree drop, which will be the steepest drop on the coaster. After this, it will head into a zero-g stall and then head into the oscillating helix. This helix will start off with a 90-degree wave turn and then send you into a much larger outer banked airtime hill. Following that, the coaster will hit an intense overbank and send you into a quick speed hill. After this, the coaster will hit its final inversion, a snappy heartline roll over the water, and twist you up to the left only to quickly twist you up to the right as you head into the final brake run. After this, the coaster will turn into the final show scene, which I believe we'll see some Velociraptor animatronics on each side, kind of showing us maybe going back into our cages. However, it's universal, so we can probably expect a grand finale, kind of like we see on Kong and Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventures. You will then probably see a giant T-Rex or maybe an Indominus Rex above you, and this is what I've heard from many different rumors. And that would be really cool to kind of look up or somewhere around you there's this huge animatronic dinosaur that is trying to eat you. And there are a lot of different rumors that maybe this track will have a motion based track, maybe a possible drop track, which I don't think will happen since it's already on Hagrid. So it wouldn't make sense to have two drop tracks in a park since it would kind of lose its magic. But a motion based track would be really cool, maybe some kind of transfer track that'll transfer you somewhere else on the ride. I, I don't really know what to expect, but I definitely think we can expect something really cool in the second show scene to end the ride off with a bang. From the concept art that we have seen from this coaster, we already know that it will be one of the best coasters in the world. I mean, its layout is loaded with great moments of airtime, a full 12 seconds to be exact. It will also have four inversions, one of them being a loaded to ground heartline roll and a zero-g stall, 
Plus, it will be the first top hat in Florida, unless Icebreaker opens first. This coaster will be one of a kind in the state, and in my opinion, I easily think this will be Universal's best coaster, and even the best coaster in Florida for that matter, unless Iron Gwazi is going to be significantly better than we already expect it to be. But let me know what you guys think of Jurassic World Velocicoaster down in the comments section below. Tell me if you guys think it'll be the best coaster Universal or possibly the best coaster in Florida. As always, guys, this was Hunter from Theme Park Hunting. I'll see you guys later and follow the thrill.